million pounds of fuel and liquid oxygen. We have loaded all of the fuel on first and second stage. Liquid oxygen is now complete on the first stage. The last major event will be T minus two minutes when we finish loading liquid oxygen on the second stage. And you can see right there, the, uh, the uh, cold, chilled skin of the second stage is the warm Florida air moving by it. We're seeing the condensation of the moisture in the air. Everything continuing to look good as we come up on T minus two minutes. Stage two, LOX load is complete. And there's that call out that liquid oxygen loading is now complete on the second stage. Now that means that propellant loading is complete on Falcon 9. And that's over 1.1 million pounds of propellants now loaded on the vehicle. All systems remain go for launch. SpaceX ground computers are now draining propellant out of the lines that go up to the strong back on to the second onto the second stage. And there you can see that venting happening there on your screen. Now this creates a white cloud, uh, which is pressure from the ultra cold liquid oxygen line that's being vented there. Gas close up. And again, when that cold liquid oxygen gas meets the warmer ambient air there, it creates that condensation that you can see there on your screen. The first and second stage computers on Falcon 9 will execute stored programs to prepare the rocket for flight, leading to the ignition of the M1D engines at T minus two seconds and liftoff at T minus zero. Falcon 9 is in startup. With that call out to Falcon computers, the computers are running the final sequence for launch. First and second stage tanks are beginning final pressurization for launch. All systems are go. Let's listen in to terminal count. LD, go for launch. As Falcon 9 transports the European Space Agency's HERA spacecraft into space. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Stage one propulsion is nominal. At T plus 30 seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Slick 40. After clearing the tire, we begin to tilt or gimbal the engines. That initiates a roll maneuver you might see on the stage one camera view, although it's kind of cloudy. But this enables the vehicle's antennas Power to stay in the best nominal. position for communicating with the ground. We are into throttle down now in preparation for max dynamic aero. Falcon is supersonic. Faster than a speeding bullet, we're supersonic on Falcon 9. Waiting for the call out from GNC of Max Q. Max Q. Right on time. We're through the period of maximum pressure on the vehicle. The Merlin engines are back at power and we're out of the throttle bucket. Now from here on, even though the velocity is rapidly increasing, the atmospheric density is decreasing and that's resulting on less loads on the Falcon 9. 90 seconds into flight, the rocket typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid gravity MVAC pulling it back chill. down to Earth and getting into orbit. We've heard the call out for MVAC chill. That's a bleed valve on the second stage engine that's performing the final chill prior to second stage engine ignition. All's looking good with the first stage trajectory. We're coming up on T plus two minutes. Views from onboard the camera mounted on the inner stage of Booster 1061. Now we've got three events that'll be coming up in just under 30 seconds. 
main engine cut off, the nine Merlin engines will be throttled down and shut down. Then we'll get stage separation and then startup of the MVAC engine on its first of two burns on the second stage. We've begun throttling down the Merlin engines. Main engine cut off. Call for Miko. Stage separation. Successful stage separation. MVAC ignition. MVAC ignition and weapon power on stage two. Coming up will be fairing deployment. And for the first stage, as we saw it in the background, farewell 1061, and we thank you. As we continue climbing out of Earth's atmosphere, we're waiting for the right time when we can open up and deploy the fairing. That should be coming up in about 10 seconds. There's a camera view as we switch. You can see Hera inside the two halves of the fairing. Fairing separation. And successful payload fairing separation. As we mentioned earlier, the fairing halves have supported multiple missions. One half has flown 12, now 13 missions, and the other had previously flown 18. And those fairing halves will come back down to Earth. They're guided by cold gas thrusters and then uh, parachutes or parafoils. Falcon is on a nominal trajectory. They'll deploy and they'll be recovered by our recovery vessel, Doug. Jesse, T plus four minutes, 23 seconds. Everything continues to look good on Falcon 9 with Hera. Thanks, John. Yeah, everything's looking great. We got some awesome views here on your screen. What you're looking at is a view of the MVAC engine on the second stage uh, with a beautiful view of Earth in the background. FTS has saved. Now, we are currently in the first of two planned MVAC burns for this spacecraft. And we have separated for the first stage from the first stage. As we mentioned earlier, we will not be recovering the booster as we usually do. Now, typically, we would uh, land the booster either on a drone ship or back on land. But due to the performance, the additional performance required to deliver this payload to the in, to an interplanetary transfer orbit, uh, we will be um, not recovering the booster today. Now what you are seeing again is the MVAC engine. The MVAC engine is optimized for the vacuum of space and has about 220,000 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Again, this is the first of two burns. The two burns for the MVAC engine will take the second stage with the payload attached uh, to the targeted drop-off orbit. Falcon continues to follow a nominal trajectory. And great call out there, following a nominal trajectory. You can also follow along with the speed of the vehicle as well as the altitude um, in the bottom right hand of the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And the next event coming up in about a minute and a half from now is Seco One. Seco One is second stage engine cutoff one, which is where we will shut down that MVAC engine and allow the vehicle to coast with the payload. Uh, in an Earth orbit, and then we'll reignite that MVAC engine for a second time uh, to take the vehicle and payload to the, that interplanetary transfer orbit. Now we're just about a minute away from Seco 1. And you can see in the bottom right hand of your screen that the speed is continuing to pick up. The velocity is increasing uh, on the vehicle as the MVAC engine continues to burn. But again, in about 40 seconds from now. Stage two is in terminal guidance. In about uh, 35 seconds from now, we will shut down that MVAC engine and again, allow the vehicle to coast in an or Earth orbit before we make its way to the interplanetary transfer orbit.
stage two, FDS says safe. Continuing to get good call outs and some great views here. Again, this is from the second stage looking at the MBAC engine. The HERA payload is still attached. MVAC shut down. Nominal park orbit insertion. And great news. We heard the call outs as well as saw that MVAC engine shut down, and we got a good confirmation of nominal orbital insertion. Now the second stage is now embarking on the first portion of its coast phase. Coasting in this orbit will last about 45 minutes and we will light that MVAC engine for a second time around T plus 52 minutes. So we're gonna take a pause and we'll see you back here at T plus 52 minutes for SES2. If you're just now joining us, we did have two completed burns for that MVAC engine. Just about a minute ago, we had Seco 2 where that second stage engine did cut off and you can see that there no longer firing. And we do still have the HERA payload still attached to Falcon 9. We were waiting to hear the guidance nav control officer call out a good burn. Uh, I think they may have been stepped on. We're looking at the data and we've heard the background chatter. We do have confirmation. Nominal burn too. There good we go. Orbit. The chief engineer has confirmed we have a good second burn of the MVAC engine. So that means the Falcon 9 second stage with the HERA payload still attached has escaped Earth's velocity. So we're no longer orbiting the Earth we're now orbiting the sun. We've got one more major activity remaining in this launch mission, and that's the spacecraft deployment. You can see the Hera spacecraft right there, still attached to Falcon 9 second stage. That's expected to occur at T plus one hour and 16 minutes. So we've still got another 20 minutes, which means we're going to take a short break, and we'll see you back here at T plus one hour and 15 minutes for spacecraft deployment. And you may have noticed when we shut down the engine at the end of the second burn, we were 204 kilometers, a little more than 120 miles above the Earth. If you look at the uh, display on the bottom right of your screen, we've just crossed 7,400 kilometers as we continue to head out into deep space as we have exceeded the velocity to escape from Earth. But right now, let's listen to hear the call out and watch for separation of HERA from the second stage. HERA separation confirmed. Great view. We've got successful deployment of the HERA spacecraft. And with successful payload deploy, that brings our webcast to a close. Today's mission marks SpaceX's 389th overall mission to date and 94th mission of this year. Thank you to the European Space Agency for entrusting us with today's mission, as well as the range for their support. For continuing coverage of the mission, check out at ESA on X. And for continued updates on all of our missions, follow at SpaceX on X and SpaceX.com slash launches. Thank you to all of our viewers for joining us this morning, and we'll see you again soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching. Space Google Viser YouTube channel.